Hello and uh, welcome to this special little video. I'm very happy to report that Creality have sent me this laser cutter to have a play with and see what I can make. I've not much space in this tiny little flat, but I found a little gap in the kitchen. I can't use the cooker properly, but who wants to use that when you can cut things with a laser? The best thing about this location is it's right below an extractor fan and very close to two large windows I can open, which is quite necessary as it can generate a lot of smoke. There's two ways to control it, directly connected to a laptop running Lightburn or something similar, or put the G-code directly on a little memory card supplied that goes into the machine on the far right. And that's what I've chosen to do. Not quite as convenient as a laptop connected directly, but it works perfectly okay. The main features of this laser cutter are a 22 watt laser that is capable of cutting through 15 millimeters of plywood and an air system with an external compressor that blows the smoke away as you cut and cools the surface so when cutting wood you don't get any scorch marks on the upper face. The laser comes pretty much ready assembled so you'll be up and running almost immediately. You have this little gauge you place under the cutting head to position it the right distance above the cutting material. The thicker the material the closer to the surface uh, the laser needs to be and that's pretty much it. You're off cutting from then on. For safety, the machine has fire protection and you'll be alerted when the lens is too dirty or needs replacing. And cleaning the lens or replacing it is a very simple process by just unscrewing the protective cap and you're given some tools to remove the ring that the lens just sits behind. Before making this little intro, I've done a lot of wood cutting, creating lots of smoke and so far I haven't even needed to clean the lens, let alone have to replace it. Now I think the best way to show what this laser cutter can do is to actually make something and not just a series of test cuts but a real little project and I quite enjoyed making the Hastings front door in the last video so this time I thought I'd try a more modern London front door or front of the house using the laser cutter as much as possible. And the problem I had with the Hastings diorama, I was limited to the depth I could go as all I had was an off the shelf deep frame, which wasn't that deep. So the first thing I'm going to make is my own deep box, which was ridiculously simple as I found a website called makercase.com and all you had to do was put in the width, height and depth and it generated the files necessary to cut and it worked perfectly first time. All I need to do now is add a little bit of glue and assemble the box. The whole process from deciding I needed a box of a certain size, generating the files and then cutting them plus gluing it all together was probably no more than 15 minutes. And as someone very used to 3D printing where wait times of 8-10 hours is very common, I'm astounded. The main base of the diorama is going to be foam as it's the best way I know of creating brickwork and the plan is to use the laser to cut out the outline and etch the brick lines and my test here shows it doing a beautiful job on 20 millimeter thick black XPS foam. The other light blue foam I have it could still cut it but I found only to a depth of five millimeters probably due to the lighter color reflecting too much of the laser light so I need to cut down my 20 millimeter foam to 10 which on the last diorama I did a bad job of it but no problem I can make myself a guide for the hot wire cutter and 10 minutes of design and not much more in cutting I've got my own guide so guide in place let's trim down the black foam ah it doesn't fit and I really don't want to cut the foam in half and do it in two sections. Never mind, let's go back to plan A and use the 10 millimeter blue foam. I'll just finish off the outside trimming manually. Shouldn't be any sort of problem. The etch lines proved a perfect guide to the final cut. I did tear the foam a little bit on that cut thanks to not having a super sharp knife, something that's really important when you're cutting foam, but none of it's going to be visible so disaster averted.
The mortar lines have been beautifully cut by the laser, but they need to be opened up slightly. And my favorite tool for this today is the pointy end of a skewer. Sometimes I use a very hard pencil. This allows you some space to get the mortar in. And then after that, a quick bash with a rolled up piece of tin foil for adding some texture and we're done. The main front of the building must be plastered in some way as it's very smooth with no texture. So it's a very simple process of designing the shapes, putting it into the laser cutter and just cutting it all out in three millimeter plywood. The accuracy of the cutter means all the parts beautifully line up with each other. None of it is under any stress so I didn't need to work out any interlocking parts. Just everything stacked up and glued. My PVA bottle of glue was a bit enthusiastic on how much comes out each time so I kept pouring too much glue over everything and had to wipe it all away. But it still worked and I found a really good way of getting these parts together by sliding them together backwards and forwards until you felt it bite. A bit like when you rub two metal surfaces together, perfect machine surfaces, they will grip and be very difficult to pull apart. In this little quick diorama, which is an excuse to play with the laser cutter, I'm not going to bother with adding real world damage. I could cut little nicks here and there, hit it a few times with some heavy objects to, to create some dents, and then in the paint job, dirty everything up. But I'm going to keep it simple and keep it all clean. The door gets treated in exactly the same way, but after I'd done it, it would have been helpful if I had etched the positions of the panel lines first, so I had a good guide to where they went, rather than just trying to eyeball it. With the main structure now built, it's time to add some paint. First I give the brickwork a base browny red acrylic colour, and while that's drying, I can start on the wooden parts. I did think about priming the wooden parts first, but in the end I just went with putting the acrylic colour directly onto it. It may need several coats, but that's fine. Now the first coat on the brick worker has dried, I'm going to choose some other brick colours and randomly paint individual bricks with those colours. Painting things randomly can be tricky as it's a temptation to make all the colours uniformly spaced, whereas true random often has clumps, so try and keep that in mind. And now the big one. In the specs it said it could cut 0.05mm stainless steel and I've always wanted to do etched brass to make strong fine little details like the sort you see on model tanks but I've never fancied the actual process as it's tricky, quite time consuming and involves some really nasty chemicals that you have a hell of a job getting rid of when they need throwing away. So the question is, could you do something similar with this laser and very thin stainless steel? I've no idea of the settings, so I'll prepare a test sheet and let's see the results. Well, that all seems quite encouraging. So I'm gonna go for it and try and cut all the leaded lights in the windows and I've made them particularly intricate, so if this works, I'm going to be extremely happy. When designing the window, I purposely left little breaks in the lines, so when they were cut out, they didn't ping free. Not sure if that was necessary, but it seemed a sensible precaution. And then when back at the workbench, I could release the frame by cutting through those little tabs. And I found it was possible, with a bit of effort, to do it using just a scalpel blade and a bit of wiggling. I'm extremely happy with the results. And the plan now is to glue them to sheets of acetate to represent the uh, window panes. So I thought the easiest way of doing this is to spray the stainless steel with some spray mount, which is some sort of rubbery glue, carefully lay it onto the acetate and roll the whole thing flat. And it worked perfectly. I decided to keep the bare metal, which after going through the laser had darkened a little bit. I'm sure you could uh, lightly sand that away, but I like the patina it gave. It really looks like old leaded lights, and I just can't imagine how I could have done it any other way.
Now's the time to unite the brickwork to the window area and I'm going to use some Gorilla Glue, a salt that foams which is quite good on uh, XPS foam. But it does expand a little bit so you will need to weigh things down while it's drying. For the mortar line, in the past I've used a combination of tile grout, chinchilla sand, and then covered it all in a weak PVA mixture. This time the mortar line is a lot smaller, and I've decided to just use the extremely fine tile grout, which I will carefully brush into the cracks, and then give everything a light spray of just water. The tile grout should activate with the water and dry rock solid. The main thing left to do is some railings in front of the building and steps from the door. So a super quick design in light burn, send it over to the laser, cut the shapes out, glue them together, job done. It's extraordinary how fast you can do all this. The actual railings themselves I'm just going to use bamboo skewers, cut to length and then glued into the guide holes cut on the laser. All the railing parts are black or dark grey, so this time I did prime with black. And then a simple cover over with some dark greys and lighter greys for the odd highlight, and the job was done. Before I start assembling everything together, I'm just going to dig out the oil paints and make some potential blurry interior details. And I've decided to use oil paints because they're the easiest to blend. So it's just a matter of choosing a load of random colours, splodging them on, and then taking a blender brush to smooth it all together. Should be really quick. The question now is can it cut thin sheet of brass and yes it can. These are the last pieces I need to finish off the door and it's just final assembly and done. And there we have it, quite a simple little diorama, but the speed and accuracy of it was greatly helped by the laser cutter. All the wooden parts could have been cut by hand with fret saw, but were probably taken 10 times as long and nowhere near as neat, which is perfectly okay if it's your hobby and there's no time constraints and the journey is more important than the end result. But I'm struggling to get videos out fast enough, thanks to having a day job. So I really believe this laser cutter can help me enormously. Of another idea using it and hope you will all come back and see how it turns out. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you on the next video. Bye.